So you're, t you're talking a lot about touching on in these couple areas, the, the customer. Uh, let me throw something at you here. How about the employee experience? How crucial is the employee experience to the customer experience? Don't you need a really empowered workforce to be able to drive what you want for the customer, to drive that experience you talk about? Your workforce really needs to care about the client. How do you, how do you how do you achieve that? Yeah, so I mean, t talking about any kind of growth, you you have your sort of customer facing mechanisms to drive growth. But absolutely, if if you don't align the employee experience and the employee themselves, the employee segments, the employee um, sort of profiles, to so sort of the the level of service the experience, everything of your customer, if, if there's a mismatch between the employee set and the employee experience and what it takes to motivate and deliver on that level of customer experience that you set, yeah, I mean, bad things happen. So I think a lot of times when companies go through um, that reintroducing themselves to the customer, understanding what the customer expects, it starts to, it's, it starts to pose a question of, well, they want it faster, they want, it, they want higher quality, they want it 24-7, well, what does that mean to your operating model? What does that mean to your employee set if they've been used to a uh, you know, nine to five culture or work style culture? So yeah, I mean, when you're talking about growth and delivering at the speed of the customer, there's implications to the operating model, the employee experience, and even how you position yourself out in the market with your brand. Great, great, okay. So uh, the, uh, the customer experience, uh, Coopetition. Yeah, and, and then the third one, um, it's this evolution of, of customer service. Um, again, if we go back decades, you know, you had a classic customer support function. I think there are parts of it that evolved into customer service, and then over the last decade plus, um, th this notion of customer success is, is emerging. And while I think it can be argued that it started in the software um, tech industry, with most industries having such a huge part or soon to be huge parts of their businesses, services based, software based, um, this concept of customer success um, is probably w one of the top conversations that we're having. And customer success is all focused on getting your customers to use your product or service more. So it's very much focused on retention, knowing that your ability to have a larger loyal customer base enables them to stay longer potentially be more open to buying cross products and services that you're selling them, but also trusting you to lead them to the right solution, even if it's not within your own four walls of a company. And as much as I'm a huge fan of customer success um, and, and really up-leveling the value of support, service, and success, there's huge implications going on right now. For example, if you have a customer success department very focused on individuals, customers using your product, being aware of other products that could be used to complete sort of your pain point or to resolve your pain point, it poses the question of what's the role of field sales? What's the role of inside sales? What's the role of marketing? Um, what's the role of legacy support organizations? Um, so again, a lot of the conversations we're having is shifting to more of a customer retention based philosophy, heavy nods towards customer success, but it's not just standing up a customer success organization and forgetting about everything that exists. And it's not just renaming the customer support organization customer success. So there's a lot of operating model considerations to, uh, to, to work through before really setting up a profitable customer success capability.